All right, another day, another week in the books, another Stock Market Weekly Recap coming right at you. So uh, let's just say we'll we'll look at the week and then look at some changes we made. Um, all right, on the week down 4.9%, not the best week for me, I gotta got to be honest, but really everything went pretty well until you talk about the shellacking we received uh, on Thursday. Talk about a shellacking. I mean, golly. That's a shellac, in case you were curious. It was rough, but overall, I mean, we could have been worse. We could have been worse for sure. Uh, so let's look at uh, let's look at some of what happened during this week. So um, let's see. Not much. Not a big week for us, actually. Again, I, I've been very passive on this portfolio, really, just due to the fact that, well, um, I mean, have you seen the market lately? It's not necessarily the time that I'm looking to buy heavy onto a bunch of stocks, so I've been kind of passive on it. But we start off, see, this week we, we're in a little bit of dividend going on here. Analog devices only on one share of that, but uh, 62 cents, so that did get reinvested. 4.0049 shares. Hey, what can I say? One more like that, and I'll have 0 .01 share, okay? Just listen to me. Not bad. Um... Target paid a dividend as well, uh, two ninety nine based off my four point five shares that I own. Um, so two dollars ninety nine cents, nearly three bucks that got reinvested four point zero two five shares. It's something. Um, I'm looking to buy more Target, but I want it to fall a little bit more, a little bit more, please. Um, I went ahead and I. Uh, that's right. I purchased some shares of uh, ETFs. Uh, KBWY, which is the premium yield equity, REIT. I bought another $50 worth, which is equivalent to two and a half shares. Uh, that's putting me total um, on this position, right around five or 10 shares, I should say. Uh, and KBWY, um, or KBWD, this one, the other one's KBWY, sorry, which is the high yield financial portfolio. Bought 3.7 shares, uh, which brings me to 10 on that one as well gotta love it we'll take a look at that actually because i wasn't i don't remember um but <clears throat> let's see global x super dividend fund which is div um paid 43 cents it's a monthly payer that got reinvested for 0 0.027 nothing too crazy there and microsoft also paid a dividend uh off my 4.32 shares i got 221 which got reinvested for 0 0.01 share so Nothing crazy there. We'll look at that those additions to KBWY and KBWD real quick and see what they have to offer. Uh, let's see. Where are you hiding? So yeah, 9.81 shares of KBWD, 9.69 of KBWY. So be saying 10 shares, pretty accurate, right? Let's look at the M1 Finance Portfolio. Well, first we got to see all time. We got to see all time on the Robinhood one, up 22.3%. Um, up $3,100 on this one, uh, which I'll take. I bought a lot during this dip here, which helps quite a bit. Uh, overall, started this bad boy in 2017 of July, so i like to see the improvement there. Um, for the M1 Finance portfolio, if we look uh, on the week, down 4.6 on this one. Not a beautiful time, i got to be honest with you. It's not beautiful. Um but could have been worse again, a little bit better than my um, M1 or my Robinhood portfolio, I should say. Really, no major adjustments made to this one. I didn't really change anything. Just a normal buy period. Um, <clears throat> so during the uh, week, let's see. During the week, we obviously had just one dividend uh, in Microsoft and a normal trading session. Uh, purchased some AT&T. Coles, Iron Mountain, a uh, little bit of Prospect Capital, and some of Brookfield Renewable uh, Energy Partners. Um, so, yeah, nothing major here. Really just five buys, nothing crazy. Overall, all time on this bad boy. If you look from a money-weighted perspective, up 29.82. If you're looking just off of the holdings uh, in general, up 8.87. Uh, which is an unrealized gain of right around nine hundred twenty-seven dollars. So good all time. I'm pretty happy with that, um, especially for starting in 2018 with the dip we had. I'm okay with this. 
Uh, I've put a lot of money to this, and I'm looking to put a lot more. Sem1 portfolio, I really want to be the dominant portfolio of my two um, here in the future. And it kind of has been that way. I'm putting in $100 a week into this one and 50 into the other one. So eventually this one will outweigh that one. If we look at the markets compared to my portfolio, the Dow was down 5.5. So at least I outperformed the Dow on both of them, right? I mean, that's something, right? Um, but 5.5% uh, down on the Dow brings us year to date to 10.28% down, which is looking better. Uh, again, the recovery has been massive, so you expected a pullback. But I kind of knew in me, I knew this pullback wasn't going to last for long just because of the way this market's treating. It's so volatile. Some days are going to be massive downward movements. Some days are going to be massive upwards movements. It's just so weird right now how this market's trading. Uh, and it'll be a while before we're done with it. But I think I do think overall we're going to trade flat for a little while here. At least a few months of trading completely flat. So just be anticipating that. I might buy some more. I'm waiting to buy. Um, the S&P 500 uh, on five-day down 4.78. So right around my portfolios we're at. Uh, Year-to-date down 5.86. Uh, pretty nice, still over 3,000 though on the SP, which is nice. The NASDAQ did cross over 1,000 or 10,000 at one point this week, um, but since it was down 2.3%, it fell from that. So, yeah, on the oh, 52 week, week range, highs of 10,000. Oh, gosh, we reached it and it fell short, but it's okay. It is certainly okay. Um, so, year to date, still up 6.87 and investors you see in the previous weeks they weren't flocking as heavy into these tech stocks and now they're flocking right back into tech um, and I think some of the reasoning behind that um, is going to be the fact that well I think we're a little bit more unsure again about everything going on and once that uncertainty kicks in it's rough the uh, Jerome Powell and the Fed made a statement about really the jobs report not being quite as good as what we thought it was and the reasoning behind it and I think investors kind of got scared and they flock back into the safe tech stocks that are benefiting from this as opposed to just being a broad market uh, purchase so interesting as far as news is concerned we have iPhones expected to be production uh, uh, on the iPhone 12 expected to produce in July um, again, this is your 5G phone. Um, who knows? Um, iPhone 11s are going to have both 5G and the normal, so we'll see how that looks. As far as production is concerned, they're expecting it to take a little bit longer, um, a little bit longer to produce the 5G one. So and it's all just due to supply chain. If you think about the fact that you know global supply chain has been hit so hard because of the pandemic, well, what a shocker. It's harder to make the product because you can't get the parts for it. Uh, Uber likely going to be out um, of the acquisition of Grubhub due to an antitrust deal. I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I don't think this acquisition was smart, in my opinion. Just from a perspective of money loss, uh, this was not going to go well for them because, shoot, Grubhub loses so much money it's insane and Uber loses so much money it's insane. You're talking about adding just the two conglomerates of absolute money loss. Just, I don't know. I'd, I think as far as market share, it would have been good for them. But I think that's why, again, this quote-unquote antitrust concerns um, stopped it from happening. So, you know, that's all right. Uh, overall, Grubhub um, <coughs> is probably going to get purchased by someone else. So just be anticipating that. But Uber's not going to be in the picture. Disneyland is set to reopen. That's right. Um, Disneyland Resort's opening on the 17th of July. That's pretty wild. The 65th anniversary of the opening, so pretty significant date in that aspect. And there's a lot of restrictions, obviously, that come along with this as far as distancing and sanitation. So costs are going to be high, but overall this is going to be a huge boon in revenue because they will be selling out their max capacity every single day. I'll just tell you that right now. I just know they will. You see the same thing from Disneyland and Shanghai. It's it's going to be the same thing here in the U.S. as people are locked up 
They want to go out and do something, especially when their kids are annoying them. Um, you see Chris Cox uh, departed from Facebook last year um, because of artistic differences, and now he is coming back. Um, he's coming back. Pretty cool for him as the chief product officer. Uh, he's pretty good for the company. I mean, overall, a very trust, trusted figure from Zuckerberg, so... Let's see what he can do, obviously, to, to differentiate. But Facebook's just a beast. I mean, whoever you're putting in leadership, the top-tier leadership in Zuckerberg and San, uh, Sheryl Sandberg, just, I mean, they're too good. They're too good. Uh, we saw a massive video game report this month for May, and again, we anticipated it. Not quite as massive as you saw in April, but another just very good, uh, very good increase, 52%. Uh, overall increase, the best May since 2008, and again, I mentioned recessions are the best time for video game stocks, people are laid off and they need stuff to do, so people are buying video games and playing video games at unprecedented levels, uh, that's why you see really these all correlate with recession times. Year to date, sales gain of 18% over 2019, which is a very down year by the way, so very good to see that. Hardware sales were up 56%, uh, accessories rose 32%, and software rose 67%. Nice. Hardware sales led by the Nintendo Switch. What a shocker. Everyone's buying Switches. They're sold out everywhere. Uh, Beth, Beth, Beth and unit and dollar sales. I have a lisp all of a sudden. Um, they were the best since May 2009 sales of the Nintendo DS. Okay. I had a DS, there's no doubt about it. Um, the best selling accessory was the Xbox Elite Series 2 wireless controller. Good for them. Um, as far as software, Call of Duty Modern Warfare retook the number one spot on dollar sales, which is crazy. Um, I don't know, I think that's wild, but think about that. This number two is Grand Theft Auto 5. Again, what is going on? People buy Grand Theft Auto. I mean, hasn't everyone purchased Grand Theft Auto 5 at this point? I don't know. I guess you're including the GTA Online sales as well. I would assume that the micro purchases. Micro. Why can't I think of it? Micro purchases? Micro transactions. Oh, he's done it. Uh, the brain just gave out on me. Uh, third, it's going to be Animal Crossing New Horizons, which people are obviously. Love it, right? You gotta love Animal Crossing. You get to live a second life, pretty much. Uh, and NBA 2K20, not a great performance from 2K20. What can I say? Um, yeah, overall, very good video games reports. You see AT&T planning on potentially um, selling uh, its Warner Bros. video game unit. I mean, not necessarily the industry I'd be selling, but AT&T, they're trying to refine their business, and I, I kind of get that to an extent. I think you need to get rid of the cable business first, but, you know, what can I say? Um, but, obviously, Warner Bros. Uh, video game unit, not that special, all things considered, because they don't have that good of games, what can I say? So, it'd be interesting to see how that goes, if they'll be able to sell it for the $4 billion they're desiring. And, um, looks like it'll be a slow haul for the EV truck industry, with Tesla not bringing its semi to the market until 2021 at the earliest, and Nikola, the biggest short squeeze of all time, uh, shooting for a 2023 debut, uh, which is also a f company, is a Ponzi scheme right now. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to tell you that, but that's right. Nikola's a Ponzi scheme right now. It's okay. If you're invested in Nikola, that's fine, but you're going to be losing a lot of money in the short term. I'll just tell you that right now. As long as you anticipate it, that's fine. So. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. This is your weekly recap.